Welcome back to Super Sentai Review, episode 133. This is reviewing episodes 14 to 17 of Shurikenger. Now, 14, I was not really a big fan of this one when I read about the description of this one. Well, purely because we have a guy who is American who wants to become a Shurikenger and becomes a self-proclaimed Shurikenger Brown. It was not an interesting episode. The only thing I thought was kind of interesting about it was actually something that happened a little bit later when Dayu saves Juzin, Decker's Santa counterpart, helping him out, and that's it. 15 was all about an imposter just trying to fool the Rangers. I wasn't really big. It was okay, per se. It's just that basically they it took some time, but basically they did figure out the plot pretty easily. 16 is quite an interesting one, where it's basically where one of the one of the vases is basically damaged that they have via their practicing script stuff in the main strategy room that they normally meet anyways. And I'm like, don't they have any rooms maybe besides this one room? Yeah. It's just kind of weird. Which apparently this is also to eat all their meals in this same room. So... So pretty much like they have it where the the four the the five share can just fall around the Kibuto, which shows what what things are like when they're not well help helping out around the mansion. Okay, and about the monster episode, which is a guy who's very shy, and he's basically an armadillo monster. That's simple what he is. I'll hope his old gimmick is that his shell was really strong, and first in the battle of him they couldn't do much of anything at all. Because well, the shirt half of the shirt can just compete with the character about, about their things, than actually about the monster. Even though that the, the old man told me he should do it, but they didn't. Anyways, it was kind of odd. Yeah, it's an okay episode per se. They basically beat in the same way both times. Heat and water basically destroying really easily. Excuse me. S Seventeen is quite interesting because. It's the debut of Shuriken Gold. Yes. We start out with the mis this mysterious sushi chef. It's like, yeah, we see him right at the start of the episode. Who this guy is? His name is not revealed until the end of the episode. Who the heck this guy is? So, he's like, yeah, time to meet up the Shurikengers. And then later on, we see an arrow fired into the mansion. Yes, seriously, in the, sh in the ship of house. Now, I should point out, though... Now you might be asking, did this happen in Samurai? Yes, it did. As a matter of fact, this is a very similar plot to that. Mm -hmm. And the, the, that's basically kind of a side. Uh, that's basically the A plot, while the B plot is simply, oh, we have a monster peeping on the the Red Ranger. Why? Well, the, the reason is pure and simple. You know about silly magic? And he does point later on and says, peeping is wrong. Yeah, it is. Yep, and he, they eventually find out he's in this particular valley, which apparently the Shuriken Blue is actually connected to his family, which is interesting to say the least. And apparently it's a sacred lake. Okay. And then, of course, we have it where the Shuriken Gold makes his public debut near a riverbed, mind you, that is happily nearby. I thought this was kind of weird. Where he's like, yeah, time for my debut. And more, and just basically more right in front of both the Shuriken. Just like, like, at first, basically, Shuriken doesn't recognize it. Though he does recognize it by the end of the episode. And he's able to use one move to go, call it EI. Which apparently is the thing where, like, oh, you can basically slice your wall, your, your sword is in the sheath. Now, I have seen this one other time beside from this particular series. And there is a character who does use this move. What character am I asking to talk about? Brooke. Yes, he does this a lot in One Piece. So, take it. he basically takes out the Nameless Horde pretty easily. And he even takes out the, well, the, the boss, the, the sorcerer. And after everyone goes giant, they still can't beat him. So he's like, okay. So he summons his own Zord. A squid sword named Squiddy. And Red Circle, hmm, that, that sword looks familiar. And eventually, thanks to their combined mind, they're able to beat the guy. And it's found out that by the end of the episode that, well, Shere Karen does know him. His name is Genta. Yeah, he's his childhood friend. They reveal this, Vernon. They reveal this. Yeah, he does know him. 
So, yeah. So we get more about this in episode 18. Yeah, in case you're curious, though, why in the war I just breeze through, like, four episodes in five minutes, you know, it's probably quite longer. <sighs> because I kind of skipped over 14 and 15. Be well, 14 because I was not interested in the episode. In the case of 15, nothing really much to do when it comes to that one. I thought it was an, not a good episode. It just basically... 16, that was interesting at best. I think 17 is probably the best episode of this batch. Because, basically, we introduced a new character. Yep. So, yeah, not much else to say about this. So, tomorrow, more Super Sentai. Now, I I was going to stop at 25, that was my initial plan, but I'm actually going to stop at 26 because that's basically what these episodes are leading toward. Yes. So, we do have a brief flash with Dayu where she basically just saves Juzu Decker Senta, kind of for his life. As a repay for what he did for her back in episode 8. Yep, that was simply the reason for it. And yeah. And Dayu does not reveal this just yet. And that's will reveal the reason why she's upset. Yeah. And no denying. Despite being a monster, she's very beautiful. And of course, she's played by a very beautiful actress. Rema Park. Yeah, I've seen pictures of her. Damn, what a beautiful woman she is. And currently, she's only 42 years old. Yep, 42. But let's, but let's keep us up pretty healthy. Yep. Can't wait to discuss this a little bit more. Now, yes, she's also a voice actress. Look her up and see what she's in. One of the series she was in was Fuma Alchemist. Being the the Japanese actress for um one of the characters in the series. She's also in Naruto, the voice of Tamari. Yep. But yeah, not much else to say with this episode. Uh, these episodes. So, tomorrow, more Super Sunday. Okay, next video. Bye.